Welcome in the name of the resurrected Christ. We pray that you are well, and we pray that uh, you have had a fulfilling and safe week. Uh, one announcement, uh, we want to thank you all uh, at Epiphany specifically for your continued support of Christ's beloved community in the dwelling. Um, your response as a congregation for providing things like t-shirts and towels and food for our partner organizations has been outstanding and we want to thank you for that. Um, also, I want to uh, lift up another partner that we have in the community, Lutheran Services Carolinas. Um, Lutheran Services of the Carolinas operates about half a dozen programs here in the area. And so uh, Forsyth County is blessed to have a large presence with LSC in the area. And I know that a number of you are, are supporters of LSC's ministry. One of the things that they have been uh, contacted about too are ways in which uh, folks can help. And so uh, they are asking specifically if you have the ability to uh, look in your food pantry and they are looking for staples for their staff. Uh, as you can imagine right now, um, many of their staff members are working very, very diligently to keep things clean and healthy and safe for residents at, at LSC facilities. And oftentimes they are not able to go to the grocery store or to do things that they need to do. And so uh, if you have any food pantry items, you can bring those up here to the church. They are also looking for hygiene and cleaning supplies. And so if you have any of those around at your house, uh, that would be helpful. Also, for those folks that sew, we want to invite you to consider making some masks for those folks, both for the residents and for the staff there. And then finally, something that we can all do is to consider sending a card or a letter to any of, the, any of those facilities. And if you need the address for that, shoot me an email here at the church or give me a call on my cell phone and I'll be happy to find out that information for you. Again, we're delighted that you're here, and I invite you to stand for our gathering hymn. Is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Hey, everybody. It's me. And our dog, Maya, here to tell you the children's story. I don't think Maya's going to participate very much, but she promises to be a better listener and a better audience than she was last week outside. Not quite as much stuff to explore in the house as there was outside. So, I have a puzzle. Well, actually, it's a picture of a puzzle. And I'm going to show it to you, and I'm going to see if you can guess what the picture in the puzzle might be after it's finished. Can you tell? No, not really, huh? There aren't really enough pieces of the puzzle put together yet. All right, I'm gonna show you the second picture. Get ready. Okay, what do you think? Can you figure out what it is this time? That's right, it's an elephant. However, there were still pieces of the puzzle missing. Any more guesses as to what might be in the remaining pieces? That we're missing to the puzzle? Do you think you can tell what the other pieces might contain? I'm going to show it to you and you're going to be very surprised. Look at that. Not only is it an elephant, but what else can you see? Horse, ape, dog, cat, and mouse. Can you see them? Point them out to me. All right. So what does that tell us about puzzles? So, when all the pieces of the puzzle are in place, you can see the whole picture. So, in today's scripture story, the same thing is true for the two disciples walking to Emmaus, where the more pieces of a puzzle that they receive, the better they are able to see the whole picture, just like you were. But instead of seeing more animals, the two disciples were better able to see that the resurrected Jesus was with them. The story starts with the two disciples walking to their house and the resurrected Jesus joins them. But they don't know that the person walking with them is the resurrected Jesus because they don't have all the pictures to the puzzle. So Jesus helps them put the pieces of the puzzle in place. And those pieces were stories about Jesus, other stories from the Bible, 
and praying together. Once all three of these pieces of the puzzle were put in place, then the two disciples were finally able to see that the person who was with them was the resurrected Jesus. And once they realized it was the resurrected Jesus and saw him, do you know what they did? They went back to Jerusalem to help to put those same three puzzle pieces together for the other disciples. And guess what? The same thing that was true for the two disciples in today's story is true for us as well. When we learn about and talk about Jesus and the stories with each other, we pray together and we talk to other people, we're better able to see the resurrected Jesus. And that's the good news for today. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who teaches us how to see and then live your resurrected life. Thank you and amen. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the people. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, every one whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day, about 3,000 persons were added. Word of God. 
word of life. Thanks be to God. Now let us sing the psalm responsively. Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart, you have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. Word of God, word of life. 
Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Now, on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you are walking along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, besides this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us, they were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. Before I begin my message, I want to take a few moments to tell you what a nice little old lady is doing in a place like this. About a year ago, I began to feel that God was not finished with me yet, that there was at least one more thing I needed to do. I had read online that the North Carolina Synod was starting a lay preacher program, and so I applied and was accepted. It's been a wonderfully renewing experience for me personally. One of the requirements for the program is that the preacher in training has to preach in his or her own congregation. The time has come, and I thank Pastor Russell Peake for encouraging me in this process. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts 
be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I love butterflies, and my friends and my family know this, so almost every card I get or gift I receive has a butterfly somewhere on it. Now, I'm not sure in my life journey where I started to see butterflies as my own personal sign of the resurrection, but it's been a long time. One of my favorite butterflies in, the, in my collection is a light catcher that my granddaughter Hannah gave me. It hangs in a window right next to my kitchen table. It has deep colors and very and reflects light beautifully. The Wednesday before Easter, I was dusting, which was my first mistake, and I dropped the butterfly, and it broke. I hope heart broke a little bit too. I didn't clean it up immediately. I looked at it broken on the floor for a long time. And then it came to me that broken is how these two disciples in our gospel today felt as they walked to Emmaus. Broken dreams, broken hopes. We had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel, the one to save us. The two disciples on the, walk, on the walk were not part of the eleven or the inner circle, but a larger group. And they were all together that morning when the women reported what they had seen at the tomb. But nobody at that point had actually seen Jesus, so these two might have become discouraged and decided to go home. Little did they know that they were starting on a spiritual journey that would inspire people for generations and centuries. The story of the walk to Emmaus is told by Luke only. And the chapter headings in most Bibles or in commentaries, this passage is called the walk to Emmaus, as if to make this journey a very special part of our Easter journey. You may also recognize Walk to Emmaus as the name of one of the three-day retreat movements like Via de Cristo or Cursia. The movement name came from Luke 24. Cleopas is named but cannot be identified with any certainty. His name is not found anywhere else in the New Testament. The other walker is not named, but one commentator speculates that this person may be the wife of Cleopas. That suggestion seems valid to me since they're traveling together and both of them invite Jesus into their home for supper and to stay the night. And this is not the kind of thing you do until you have first checked with your spouse. I really like this suggestion that this may be Cleopas's wife and I'm going to name this person Rachel. There are already enough unnamed women in the Bible. Cleopas and Rachel had heard the reports given by the women of the empty tomb and the vision of angels, but they weren't quite believing it yet. The great stumbling block for them seems to be that it had been three days, and Jesus had said, the Son of Man will be betrayed in the human hands, and they will kill him, and on the third day, he will be raised. They might have been discussing this point when Jesus joined them. And this is where Luke's gift as a storyteller really shine. I've read this story many times, as I know that you have, but I still get excited just as if I didn't know the end of the story. In verse 21, Cleopas and Rachel had hoped he was the Messiah. They had hoped. Past perfect tense in the English language, which denotes something that started in the past but is completed later. Now, I know some of you shut down at the mere mention of English grammar, <laughs> but this is important, so I want you to listen up. Cleopas is saying, we had hoped but now it's gone. So much sadness in those few words. So much regret as they look back at what they had hoped and what they had dreamed. 
there's a void in their lives, a void that was created by the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross. But then, miraculously, Jesus joins them, and Jesus walks with them. St. Augustine could face this beautiful paradox this way. The teacher was walking with them along the way, and he himself was the way. I believe Luke is telling the story to offer us hope and encouragement on our way. Throughout our lives, our relationship with God changes step by step as we learn to rely on him more and more. I was seven years old when my father died. And because I had a faithful mother and loving Sunday school teachers, I was already aware of the presence of God in my life. But that night, I took a step forward in my young faith. Instead of praying, now I'll lay me down to sleep, I prayed, God, now that Daddy is gone, you've got to help Mother and me. It's rather presumptuous for a seven-year-old to be telling God what God has to do, but he heard me. My prayers now, I think, show a much greater degree of maturity. Now I say, Please, please God, help all of us. I think what changes in our faith are not the words we use, but the awareness of how God is with us every step of the way. Even when we have lost our way, God is not only with us, but in us. After Cleopas and Rachel hear Jesus tell the scripture to them, they invite Jesus in to stay with them. Jesus breaks bread with them, and their hope is restored. Their faith grew. They moved from doubt to belief, and then immediately to action. Quick, let's run back to Jerusalem and tell the others that we have seen the Lord. Perhaps as we are walking with these first century Christians, we can share some of our experiences with them. We could tell them about the times when our lives are full of sadness and defeat and questions. This is when Jesus joins us on our journey. In the most joyful moments of our lives, Jesus joins us on our journey. And maybe best of all, in our everyday, ordinary, routine-driven lives, Jesus joins us on our journey. Devotional writer Sarah Young says, as you trudge through the sludge of this fallen world, keep your mind in heavenly places. It was very late in the journey when Cleopas and Rachel realized that even though they didn't recognize him at first, Jesus was with them the whole time. Didn't our hearts burn within us while he was talking to us on the road? And when you look at other events that happened that Easter day, you see that Jesus was with them the whole time. Mary weeps, and Jesus is there. The disciples hide, and Jesus is there. Thomas doubts, and Jesus is there. These travelers to Emmaus have lost hope, and he's there. We look for him, and he is there. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you what happened to my butterfly. I am spatially challenged, which means I am terrible at jigsaw puzzles. I started a 500-piece puzzle about the 1st of March, and I think I might have only 475 pieces left to place. <laughs> but as I continued to stare at the broken butterfly on the floor, I realized that there were just five pieces, and they weren't shattered, and the butterfly could be glued back together. And so can our hopes and dreams, even after this pandemic. Our lives might be altered, fractured, life might be changed drastically, but the thing that we had hoped for, the thing that we continue to hope for, has already happened. Our Messiah has come. 
Easter is not a one day event. Easter is a season. Easter is a lifetime. And most important, Easter is an after life time. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Truly human, 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, giver of life, life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need, saying, Hear our prayer. For those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For the diverse natural world, for jungles, prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces home, that they are nurtured and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For broken systems we have inherited and that we continue to perpetuate, forgive us. Redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and violence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who call upon your healing name, give rest. Stay with us and walk with all those who are hungry, friendless, despairing, and desiring healing in body and spirit, especially those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the faith-forming ministries of this church, for those considering baptism, for those growing in their relationship with God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, especially Jerry Rabb, even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our, Father, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.